Hello and welcome to the edge of the forest, where my tiny village lies. Today I'm going for a slightly meditative walk amongst the trees, rocks and brooks. And I am not going alone. You're coming with me. Off we go. I live on a hillside, but the forest is even higher. So I have to go up amongst wild grass and along a few meadows to reach the first trees. There we are. At this time of the year, ferns have just finished unraveling and now they are covering the ground all around me. Isn't it beautiful? On this walk, I will focus on my senses, starting with the one I will probably use the most here. Sight. There's so much to see in a forest. Everywhere you look, life is blooming. Here I'm at what we call a granitic chaos. A beautiful place made of rocks and standing stones. With sometimes strange and maybe evocative shapes. But I didn't choose this place by accident. Actually, there's one fern I wanted to identify for a while. So this time, I came with my trusty forest guide to look for a lake. There are so many ferns in European forests, and yet, we rarely pay attention to the breadth of varieties that grow. And I'm curious about this specific one. There are many like this in the area where I live, especially on banks or along the brooks. But curiously, this specimen here is the only one growing in this particular place. And it shows a very symbolic spot. I wonder how it came here, how long it has been there for, and how long it will stay. I found it, Plecnum spicant, also known as Deer Fern. I couldn't have expected a more poetic name. Now, time to immortalize it on paper. I haven't drawn from life for so long and I feel a bit rusty. Starting with the main shapes of both the stone and the fur.
then I'm going to add details leaf after leaf sketching is a wonderful way to just live in the moment focusing on one single thing at a time Now let's head to a small book. I have many spots in the forest where I enjoy spending time or reading. And I thought that I would share this one with you. The perfect place to focus on the sense of touch especially since it's a hot day. So time to cool off and enjoy the running water on my hands and feet. Let me share a fantastic and simple way to meditate by a stream. Take a handful of dirt or sand, picturing it as your current troubles, if any of course. Immerse your hand in water, slowly open it, and just let your troubles go. Feel lighter and lighter as it goes away with the flow. Walking barefoot is also one of the most enjoyable ways to ground yourself. And with eyes closed, I can focus on the breeze grazing my skin. My face. The textures under my fingers. Here's some pine spark. Then mouse on an old oak tree. And now with my eyes closed, I'm going to move to another sense. The hearing. so much to listen to in a forest. The wind in the trees, the sounds of water, 
flying bees, even if I know that this sound is not everyone's cup of tea. And of course, hundreds of birds singing. My favorite one is probably the blackbird's song. Powerful and melodious at the same time. Can you close your eyes and picture yourself in a green wood and imagine all these sounds? It's your nature's concert. Now it's time to find a nice and secluded spot in another mysterious area of the forest. And just enjoy being here. I brought the perfect reading with me. How to See Fairies by Charles Van Sandwick This name may sound familiar to you as I showed another book by the same author in a roleplay a few months ago. His world is filled with small creatures, herbs, pixies, fairies. No doubt he has probably met a few of them already. It's a perfect kind of book to immerse in a place like this. Speaking of food, what about the sense of taste? Of course, there are plenty of edible plants in a forest, but I chose laziness and brought a few treats with me. Cake and dried fruits. Let's go for a couple of cake slices.
Have you ever noticed that eating something outdoor, especially in a beautiful natural place, gives a whole new taste to food? This is why I enjoy picnics and meals in the garden so much. It's like we're able to focus more on what we are eating and take the time to feel every single flavor. Now it is time to pack, and I will soon be heading home. But on my way back, I will enjoy the sweet perfume of grasses along the path and make a small bouquet that will brighten up my cozy living room. Making sure I pick up flowers only when there are plenty of them and knowing these are not in danger. like grasses. They are easy to find. They last quite a long time, even without water. And they look so light. These were warmed by the sun all day long and smell like summer. We might not think about smell when walking in the forest, but actually, there are so many scents. There is one in particular that I am thinking of. Follow me. Let me take you into an evergreen wood. These were obviously planted by humans and there's barely any other tree growing in these areas most of the time. Still, there is some majesty in these very high, very straight trees. But most of all, for some reasons I can't explain, they exhale some kind of an exquisite sweet smell. I would describe it as something between toffee and strawberry jam, which always gives me the feeling that maybe some forest fairies are cooking sweets somewhere in the woods. And let me tell you, it smells divine. Now time to part, as I'm going down, back to my small village, back to my home, as the sun sets and the lights fade. Thank you for joining me on this walk, and as always, I wish you a very good